our newly elected uh, chair, Jane Fu. First of all, can we have a big round of applause for Jane? Congratulations. So a bit of uh, background on Jane. Jane is a highly experienced compliance professional. Her areas of expertise are in ethics, compliance, operational risk, and audit, working in the financial services industry in Singapore, where she's based. Jane has more than uh, 20 years of experience across a broad spectrum of the banking uh, business, products, and services. Her past roles have included uh, executive positions at major financial services firms in Singapore. Uh, she was also the chair of the Operational Risk Management Task Force and on the Financial Crime Task Force of ABS, which is the Association of Banks in Singapore. Uh, Jane is now retired from the financial services industry, but she remains active, obviously. Uh, she works as a freelance trainer on regulations from the Monetary Authority of Singapore, and we're extremely pleased and grateful that Jane has added BIIA to her list of uh, retirement activities. Jane's appointment is really uh, well aligned with BIIA's mission to provide a neutral, open platform to all stakeholders in the information ecosystem, from information providers, users, regulators, uh, government and public bodies, so we can get together and debate and resolve common issues. So we look forward to benefiting from Jane's experience as our chair, and now today we look forward to benefiting from her opening remarks. So please join me in welcoming Jane Fu. Thank you, Mark, for the kind introduction and good morning, everyone. I'm really, really very pleased to see so many of you here. So on behalf of BIIA, I wish to extend a very warm welcome to all you delegates to this BIIA 2019 conference and would like to express my heartfelt thanks to all of you for making valuable time available for this event. We wish to thank especially those of you who have made long journeys to be here in the interest of enhancing the extension of credit and the value of information services. I was talking to some of you during the breaks. Some of you have actually traveled from US, from Russia, from all over the world to be here, from Peru. It's amazing and I really thank you for that. We also wish to speak and thank, we wish to thank all our speakers who are experts and rightful leaders in their respective fields for their commitment to make this a fruitful and valuable event. And of course, we wish to thank our sponsors for their contribution. Without, without it, would not have been possible to organize this event. So thank you, sponsors. We thank our supporting organizations who provided speakers and logistics support. And of course, we need to mention the tireless efforts of the conference chair and committee members who have worked together to organize this really sell out event. And we would like to welcome representatives from our fellow trade associations, including Louis Camona from the European Business Information Association, Phoebus. As you all have seen, the theme for this conference is expressed in a formula, very mathematical. AI plus analytics plus data equals the future of risk management. And this is close to my heart because I'm in the profession of risk management. This theme expresses the shape of things to come and technology being the game changer. The BIA 2019 Biennial Conference is once again a sellout with 152 delegates from 30 countries. In 2017, we had 137 delegates from 27 countries. 
So we are really doing good, doing well. 15 years ago, the foundation was laid for BIIA when a number of information companies met for the first time to discuss the merits of launching an industry association in this region, which today is known as BIIA. And there are a number of people with us here today who were involved in this founding process. Jack Internet, CEO of Business Online, William Lim, then Director of Dun & Bradstreet Singapore and Malaysia, and now CEO of Credit Bureau of Singapore. And Johnny Kiatnan Tanvinmon, also from Business Online, and our very own beloved Joachim Bartels, Managing Director of BIIA. On behalf of the members, I would like to thank you for your initiative and loyalty and con con continued commitment to the development of association. And I'm really very inspired by all of you, truly. From the humble beginnings with only 16 members, BIIA has grown to 75 members and its reach is now global. Right from the start, BIIA set out a mission to provide a neutral, open forum through which our members, business information users, regulators as well, and government and public information sectors can debate freely and feel safe and resolve common issues. Because we are neutral and objective, no hidden agenda. The past two conferences, and this one in particular, are the evidence that BIIA provides a useful industry forum, <coughs> excuse me, not just for members, but also for information users and regulators present. Furthermore, it is BIIA's mission to promote the information content industry by demonstrating the value of information for businesses and national economies. We serve as a resource on industry standards, trends, technological developments, and policies. And we are doing this, <coughs> if, <coughs> excuse me, we are doing this effectively through conferences like this one and our website, BIIA.com, which has become a significant resource for members. And by the end of this year, the information content on BIIA.com will have passed 11,000 articles. During the last 12 months, 57,000 users, thank you, Mark. 57,000 user, unique users visited BIIA.com, conducting 75,000 sessions, up 31% from prior year, resulting in 212,000 page views. That's phenomenal. And a very important part of BIA's mission is to advocate a legal regulatory environment beneficial to the industry and helpful to all of you information service providers. And we're really here to help. The association provides industry advocacy support for its members by monitoring the regulatory environment and by participating in forums with regulators. BIA members benefit from a wide range of expertise and best demonstrated practices. The association's industry advocacy effort is led by the BIA Regulatory Committee under the expert stewardship of Neil Munro and assisted by Peter Shireen. Yesterday, we are proud to pass another milestone by conducting the first regulatory roundtable for regional regulators, with Neil Munro being the moderator. And this event was organized following a request from a number of regulators. They initiated it, they requested it. 
they requested for this round table to be conducted in the region to provide a neutral forum for regulators to meet and discuss key regulatory issues, issues affecting the information industry. And yesterday, the feedback from the regulators who were present at the round table, they said, yes, yes, please organize more of these round table discussions because they found it really, really very helpful. And we will do that. So to assist members in understanding the regulatory environment and the changes that are likely to be forthcoming, BIIA continues to work with a number of key industry and regulatory organizations such as the International Committee on Credit Reporting, the FIC World Bank, and the SME Finance Forum. And I must add that the world, you know, is a global village. We are coming closer and closer to each other, and especially at the ASEAN level, there's a lot of cooperation, even in trade, in transactions that we are, you know, going to send all over the world. And if we're going to share platforms, regulators will have to make sure that they up their game in terms of regulations where cybersecurity is concerned, where privacy is concerned, so that when we all are interconnected and we all do transactions together at a regional level, at the global level, we are safe from predators, from hackers, and we are here to do that. Last but not least, our mission is the desire to provide a valuable platform for networking. There are ample opportunities to network during this conference. The BIA networking community is twofold. We have issued passwords for 800 information professionals employed by our members to be able to access the password protected content on BIA.com and the BIA Business Information Industry Association Network on LinkedIn is over 3,400 members strong. This accounts for a combined total of over 4,000 network members, making us one of the largest networks in our industry. And this certainly is a great achievement for a relatively young association and its supporting members. For me, as a previous user of your information, it raises an interesting question. So where do we go from here? As a compliance professional, I'm still horrified and pained by the occasional headlines like the compliance conundrum, diffusing the ticking time bomb of bad, da bad data in ML compliance, or 63% of compliance professionals reported are lacking confidence in their data. So as a user information, I certainly had my fair share of frustrations and pain with the lack of meaningful data and reliable data, which I was pleased to note that the conference committee has added the topics of compliance and identification data to the conference agenda. I personally look forward to taking an active part in the discussions tomorrow when these subjects will be covered. I now like to turn to the subject of market intelligence in terms of size and focus. As many of you know, this is an area that our association focuses on as part of the insight we seek to provide the members. When I joined BIA as a director, I became intrigued by the depth of information available about the business information industry, whether it's B2C or B2B. When BIAA is not, while it's not a market research company, one can glean a lot of information from company announcements, either by extracting facts, or if you know your business, by reading between the lines. And it's like military intelligence, a snippet here, and a snippet there, and soon you get the full picture if you take the time. Nevertheless, I thought something was missing. The availability of comprehensive market size data or the definition 
of the business information industry. In discussing this situation with BIA's leadership as to why there are no relevant comparable statistics, I was quickly told that the business information industry is not very transparent. It teaches us to be transparent, but no one appears to disclose company segments in a uniform manner. The majority of the industry is privately held and does not disclose any company results. BIA co-founder Outsell Inc., a leading research and advisory firm serving executives operating in the data, information, and analytics economy, has just released its market report based on 2018 industry revenues. Outsell estimates the size of the global information industry has reached US $1.8 trillion with an average growth rate of 5%. That's phenomenal. We have not had the opportunity to analyze Outsell's latest findings, but based on our assessment from previous years, two thirds of the market is consumer entertainment, media, and education. The market size segments of interest to us, the business information industry, has now reached $150 billion. As to outsales growth projections of 5%, they are based on the total pie of US $1.8 million. Our observations are that the traditional commercial market information has become a mature market. Providers show hardly any growth or perhaps just low single digit growth rates. And of course there are exceptions. Companies who have moved aggressively into new international markets or those who are acquisitive and invested in analytics are growing at high double digit rates. Credit bureau operators who are public companies have growth rates between low single unit to high double digit growth rates. Those with high double digit growth rates have expanded into international markets or new information segments such as KYC, identification and verification. And I think we've had some conversations with some of you during the breaks that this is really an important growth area on AML, KYC, identification information. We have been given indicators that the growth rate in the AML, KYC compliance services segment are above 20%. Nevertheless, the key players in this market do not disclose any details. So where is the growth and growth drivers for our industry? Fraud is still rampant and companies are searching for solutions. This may lead to more business for those who are in analytics and fraud prevention services. A recent study by Report Consultant indicated that the global fraud detection and prevention market size is expected to grow from US $19.5 billion in 2019 to US $63.5 billion by 2027 at a compound annual growth rate of 27% during the forecast period. Cybersecurity has moved up to number one on the list of most burning technology issues of our industry. That will divest investment funds from product development to services spent to make systems secure. Anyone who's providing such services is facing a bonanza, but skill shortages is still restricting growth. It has been reported that the guardians over cybersecurity in most companies are starting to face burnout. And we all know in many of our jurisdictions, many of the databases, systems have been compromised, including some you know, very, very advanced jurisdictions in technology, but they are not spared. 
So cybersecurity risk management is an important area, growth area for us. In regard to the industry trends, quite a lot has changed in the past three years. Old industry boundaries or silos, such as serving capital markets with rating services, or serving unsecured bank credit, trade credit, plus consumer credit, and marketing services have become blurred because they have been replaced by digital processes or information solutions delivered and integrated in an automated fashion. New players have arrived covering up niches with great promise, like fraud solutions, governance risk and compliance, AI analytics, supply chain solutions, and CRM to name a few. As to AI and analytics, we have witnessed a move into such services at an accelerating rate. In the past, the route to accelerated growth was to buy competitors or companies with special databases. However, three years ago, we observed industry players were using acquisitions as a fast track to acquire skills in analytics, mainly to gain or to maintain their competitive advantage. And a year later, we observed an uptick in partnerships between firms who had analytics skill with firms who had data, creating new services or access to new customer segments. And last year, we witnessed an uptick in internal product development of analytical solutions. Thus, many industry participants are gearing up their internal product developments to catch up. And if you would like more information on these announcements and BIA's analysis, just go to BIA.com. In essence, we are at now the juncture where AI plus analytics plus data equals new ways of managing risk is becoming the norm. What troubles everyone about this is the, develop the development is the speed in which this is happening. Also, it has been very difficult for market researchers to determine the true size of this solution, solution-based information segments, because AI plus analytics plus data blurs the outcome. For outsiders, the mix has become invisible because nobody discloses the extent of the mix in such equations. And the investment community has caught up with these new market re realities. Nowadays, if you are in the data business and seeking to sell your business, you may get less than one time your annual revenue. Now, if you are in data plus analytics business, you will get three times revenue. However, if you are in AI plus analytics plus data business and firmly embedded in the financial services arena, you are likely to get six times revenue, if not more. And of course, there is this new game in town called FinTech. It is rapidly taking hold and disrupting traditional banking. It is also upsetting the relationship between traditional banking and credit bureau. Established industry players have taken notice and are making strategic investments in fintech companies. It has already made strategic investments in this sector in different geographic markets. And some regulators have actually given prefer preferential treatment to such fintech companies to, and given sandboxes for them to try out their, solution, their solutions or new creations and to be tested. So they lower the bar in terms of regulatory compliance to allow these fintech companies to, test, do, to have test beds in their geographies and then to roll out solutions. So this is definitely an area to watch out for. Last but not least, there is the threat of blockchain which may become the ultimate disruptor, not only in financial services, but for our industry segments as well. BIIA is closely monitoring the situation 
There are lots of announcements, but it's, there is no real evidence of scalable and workable solutions at this point in time. When you dig deep, you will find that many applications are still in the embryonic stage or in small beta tests. Rest assured, BIA is monitoring developments. As you will have no doubt gathered from my remarks, there is a lot going on within the, in, within the industry and within BIA itself. And as we move forward, our activity will continue to be focused around three core themes. One, information, building the most comprehensive database of market developments. Two, insight, interpreting the information we find into knowledge that you members can use and make sense of. And three, vision, providing members with a view of the future, helping them understand the factors that will affect their businesses going forward. And we are committed to do that. And on this note, I would like to close my opening remarks by thanking all of you again for attending this conference and thanking our sponsors, supporters and speakers and wishing all of you an informative, fruitful, an enjoyable event. Thank you.